the problem statement is if the gap between C and the rigid wall at D is initially 0.15 millimeters, determine the support reactions at, at A and D when the force P is equal to 200 kilonewtons is applied. The assembly is made of A36 steel. So we know the modulus of elasticity of A36 steel is 200 gigapascals or 200 times 10 to the 6 kilopascals. So now we have the diameters of each of these rods, right? So we have um, an assembly of these two rods, both made of the same um, A36 steel material. And we have the diameters being 50 millimeters and 25 millimeters with the appropriate dimensions. Now the difference between this specific problem and what was generally explained previously was that in this case, it's not up against a wall here initially, right? We have a gap of 0.15 millimeters. So this is something important to consider when you're solving for this um, problem here. Now we have a P being equal to 200 kilonewtons being applied at this particular point. B. So we're being asked to solve for the reactionary forces at A, so F, A, as well as the reactionary force at point D once this rod assembly actually um, deforms right to up until the wall since we do have this initial gap. So step one would be to remove um, the constraint at point D here at the end and then solve for the deformation of this entire assembly assuming there is no constraint at this end here. So that will be step one. Let's go ahead and do that. So now redrawing it to show that it's just being constrained at one end and not the other, with this external force being applied to 200 kilonewtons, how much would this assembly actually deform? So let's go ahead and solve for the deformation. So plugging into a deformation equation, the deformation from point A to B, because keep in mind, this external load is being applied at point B. So only this first rod would experience the elongation while the other would just be attached to it and also be moving a bit with that deformation. But no force would actually be applied here. It wouldn't compress or wouldn't stretch this rod, right? Only this rod would be stretched by this external external load. Um, so in this case, you would apply the 200 kilonewtons times the length of this first segment, which is 0.6 meters, divided by the modulus of elasticity um, times the cross-sectional area of this particular rod. So in this case, is 0.05 meters squared times pi over 4. So we will have a deformation of 0.31 millimeters. I went ahead and converted it from meters to millimeters right off the bat. So just keep that in mind. So now going back to the rod here, let's say the wall was originally at this portion, right? And now it actually stretched all the way to this portion. So keep in mind, initially we had this small gap of 0.15 millimeters but it, had, it also deformed an additional amount without that restraint of 0.16 millimeters. Since we see the total deformation is 0.31, that initial gap would be filled and then it would stretch a little bit more past that wall that we had. So now, knowing the total deformation of this rod assembly, and we initially removed that constraint, now the second step would actually to determine what force would you require in this case the reactionary force FD what force would you require to deform this rod assembly back up into where the wall is in this case how much force do you need to deform this assembly by 0.16 millimeters and doing this, you will actually solve the reactionary force. So this is actually the method in solving these reactions when it comes to these constraints here. You first initially remove this wall and just see how much the assembly would deform on its own. And then how much force it would take to deform back to where that wall originally was.
Um, and then that's how you would solve for the reactionary forces of this system. Now, it gets a little bit tricky when you're dealing with a gap. Just keep in mind you do have that initial gap, and that initial deformation does not um, contribute at all to this reactionary force because there is that gap gap that's why it's always good to solve for the total deformation initially and how much force would you require to deform it back to where that wall was in this case 0.16 millimeters so the step two is solve for that force needed to deform it back to where the wall would be so now we have the total deformation of the entire rod assembly. Now keep in mind this rod assembly is composed of two different segments. Now they're both made of the same material, however the di dimensions are in fact different. So we have the, in this case, the total deformation of the rod assembly is from point A to point D. So we have the deformation of the first segment of A to B plus that deformation from point B to D here and we know the total deformation of the entire rod assembly is equal to 0.16 millimeters which what we previously solved for so let's go ahead and plug in the equation for the deformations of each of these and solve for the unknown so with these equations we have the unknown FD which we could just factor out and we have the original lengths of the rods AB and BD, as well as the rest of the information to solve. So now let's go ahead and just plug in all the values, factor out FD, and then solve for it accordingly. We get our reactionary force FD being equal to 20.94 kilonewtons. So when it comes to the calculations, keep in mind to keep all your units consistent if you're dealing with meters um, and kilonewtons make sure everything is the same um, I simplified it a, a little bit because on the right side I did it in millimeters but make sure to keep all your units consistent until you have enough practice such that you're able to keep track of everything it's always a good practice to keep everything consistent and then at the end convert it back to whatever units you're working with or convert everything to a certain unit and then do all your calculations with those units just so there won't be any confusion caused so now with this reactionary force solved the only other unknown in this system is fa so this is where we utilize one of the equilibrium equations, the sum of force along the x direction being equal to zero. Let's say right going to the right is positive. F A take away F D in this case 20.94 kilonewtons, and we have plus 200 kilonewtons, which is our P is equal to zero. So our F A is equal to negative 179.06 kilonewtons, which actually means that our assumed direction was incorrect and it should be going the other way. So it's equal 179.06 kilonewtons going towards the left. And this is how you solve for the reactionary forces of these kinds of systems when you're dealing with a rod assembly that's constrained between two walls. The equilibrium equations alone aren't sufficient to solve for the reaction forces. And so you have to um, use other relationships, in this case, the deformations, to be able to determine these 